Hey there, Alan Matthews here. Today, in this video, I'm going to be looking at this little moderato by Dionisio Aguado. Aguado wrote a ton of etudes, a ton of pedagogical work. That means you learn from them. Um, he wrote a bunch of little things, and I love this little moderato here because it is so deceptive. We look at it, and it just looks like such an easy little piece on the page. It's just quarter notes and long half notes, and it looks so simple. And it's just really anything but. It's actually a, it's just a, a can of worms, or can be if we decide to make it that, which, you know, life is too easy otherwise. So we might as well make it. I'm just going to do a quick sight read. So we pick up a piece. What do we do? We just sight read it to see if we want to play it, basically, right? Just give an initial run through. We're not going for any kind of masterpiece here. And then we'll look at it provided that we decide to actually work on it, which for, you know, of course for this we will, but you might not in another, for another piece. So we'll just take a quick run through of it just to get it in our ear a little bit and then dive into it and look at it and talk about all the different little nuances, how to practice all that good business, because that's what we do here. All right, let's do it. This is the moderato. Something like that. So just a quick run through, kind of get it in our ear a little bit, get exposed to some of the issues that are at hand. So the main thing I noticed right off the bat is that there are upper lines and lower lines and they're kind of they're crossing over so that one will take over from the next. We have an upper line, then a lower line will take over, then an upper line, then a lower line will take over. And so let's just get into this piece, take a look and see what it is that we're that we're working with here so a quick look at the form this is the first thing we do yeah just for um, knowing just what the road map is and so generally we're in three four time here and I just see the first thing I see is a big old repeat sign right in the middle of the page and so I think well this must be split in half the first section is the A section and the second section is the B section right here and so basically then our form is A A B B basic basic form here so now that that's done let's just jump right in shall we right into the A section so well like I was saying we have upper line stems up right here's all of our stems up notes and then we have our stems down notes and so what I want to do is just to play each of these separately and what this this piece is such a great example for I'll get into it in a minute is this little device called the long short I've mentioned it on previous ones but this one is just is just a real uh, opportunity for it so we'll talk more about it so here is just our upper melody That's just the upper. So I would get really familiar with just that, as if that's the entire piece. Just play that, nothing but. It doesn't matter what fingering you're using as far as your right hand goes. We're just listening and just playing. You can play it with your thumb for all I care. Just, just play it. And so there's a little bit of a trap here. 
in that, if you look at the first measure, we've got this right here. What do we got? We've got um, high, low, high. We've got this little sequence, right? And we're just going, we've got a note. We're going down a step and then back up a step, right? We've got this type of thing. Well, then in the second bar, what do we do? We've got the exact same thing, right? This is what I would call a trap. And then just looking through, here it is in opposite for the bass line. Here it is again for the bass line. Here it is again and again. So this is a little, this is a characteristic of the piece, right? Well, it's also, it's a trap of the piece because you don't want to go da 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 It becomes rather, uh, rather kind of just childish and it's the trap. It just it comes two bar by bar. What we want is A section. And it just keeps floating and it just keeps floating and it just keeps floating until finally, boom, we sit it down and either repeat or go on to the B section. We want one big long line that gets us all the way through this entire first section all the way to here and then all the way through the repeat as well. So how do we do that? That is the question. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this right here. We're going to think of this as first off we have one note and then we have two notes leading to the downbeat. So these notes lead to this. These two notes lead to that. Let's play it that way and actually put the pauses in. So we have, and then we have those three notes and then that's our line, yes? So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one. And that's the way that this line goes. So instead of going ba 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 da da da, go boom, da da dum, da da dum, boom. It just sends the line forward instead of, which is more like a little like a nursery rhyme or something like that. It's a little it's a little heavy footed. So, talking about dynamics in this, let's take a look at this. Let's work in a nice blue here. So if you recall from past videos, if a line is going up in pitch, we want to get quieter. If it's going down in pitch, we want to get louder. So if we look at that, then we would say we're just looking at the, the stems up for right now on this. So just the, just the top end. Then from this note to this note, we want to get louder. From this note to this note, we want to get quieter. From this note to this note, we want to get louder. And actually all the way through there and then quieter all the way up into there. So let's do that. Back off and now more, more, less, less. More because it's going down, we might as well put it in there. So for the top, that's what's going on. So just for that upper melody, get that to where you can actually work that dynamic sequence. And to here, and to here. Dun, da, da, dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. Boom. And the way to do this is in practice to exaggerate everything wildly. We're not going for subtlety here. We are going for crazy clownish exaggeration. So if you're gonna get, if you're gonna make something swell, make it swell like crazy. Make it move with big, with big brush strokes here. You can always taper it back later, but to really get it into your head and get it into your hands, we want to exaggerate everything like mad. Okay. Now that we've got that for the top, let's look at the bottom. So for the bottom, we have E, 
to C, right? For these big ones, I would probably just follow the top. Follow the upper dynamics and just fit them in however they, they fit in as a start and then see what we need to do with them. However, from here to here, and this I think is one of the biggest things of this piece, from here we're just looking at the stems down here, this note to this note. This is a long note, yes? Long. And then this right here is a short note. And whenever we have a long note and then a bunch of short notes, two, three or more, we want to, let me uh, get these words off of here. This one, this first note is the release of the long note. So it's like this right here, listen. Ideally, the first of the short notes to come in after the long note completes that long note, meaning the decay at the point the decayed note at the point where the new note comes in, that's the volume level you want to bring in the new note in a perfect world. That volume level right there. Again, there. One, two, three. One, two, three. On the guitar, it generally means just playing it quietly. And so it's, you'll be most of the way there if you just say, Okay, I see that there's a long short here, a long short being a long note followed by a bunch of short notes. The first note we play quietly, this note right here. We want to decrescendo to that note. So I'll just do it in another color so that we can see it better. Oh, I just did the complete opposite of what I wanted to do. Decrescendo to that note. And then from there, then you can follow the, the contours which are to crescendo because of the line going down right here. The descending line, descending line, it goes, um, descending lines get louder. So let's do that. From the beginning, just the bass line. One, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, and two. Now back off long short. And then here. And I use these words a lot. And then here, or and two here, things like that. So I go something like this. Boom. This note, I would say something like off. And two here. These would be the words I would say as I was singing it into my, in my head. Two, three, off and to here and whether I actually clip the note or not is another question two, three. something like that so then the challenge lies in doing both of those at the same time the upper and the lower to make those actually happen at the same time so that you're taking over to catch the long short in the bass while still keeping track of the upper line. So the upper line is decrescendoing. This is actually convenient in this case because they're, actually, they're, they're moving in the same direction, meaning we're decrescendoing here in the upper. This is decrescendoing, and this is also decrescendoing down here. This right here is also decrescendoing. So it happens to both be going the same direction, which is nice. So let's do that. And then here. So there's a lot going on, yes? You're keeping track of both the top line and the bottom line. One more time. One, loud, soft, fall. And then we're crescendoing from there. Again. One, and then here. Loud, soft, softer. And then here. And then, check out what happens. Let's go to a fresh score. So then we have this right here. And there's a rest here, yes. I would practice it first without the rest, just for the continuity of the line, and then you can put the rest back in. Um, that's, that's my take on it. 
So think about it still but connecting because we don't want to come to a complete stop there musically. Even if we put a rest in, we don't want to actually like relax and sit down and say, okay, that section's over. What we want to do is continue forward. We still, we want the entire A section at least to, to feel like one thing, really connected, one thread that's just be pulling all the way through. And so what we have then is we have another long short right here. In the bass, right? We have a long note, the C, leading to the first of many short notes, which is this E. So this is going to decrescendo right here, which they pick up on in, the, uh, in that they, they recommend a mezzo piano in the dynamics that are written on here. Now, I'm largely ignoring these dynamics that are written on here in favor of, of going about this in the way that I'm talking about going about this. So the, the physical challenges of this fall in the dynamic sweep and the placement and, the, and everything else going on. Just playing the notes of this piece isn't all that hard. It's actually playing it musically and playing it masterfully. That's the beauty of this piece is that it's a, it's a little bit of a briar patch in that way. So this we want to connect here as a long short in the bass. So let's do that. We're playing from the C and the A, playing from right here. I just practice connecting that, connecting this chord, connecting this chord to this chord. Two chords. One, two, three, one. And do it as a long short. Two, three, one. One, two, three. So that it's just releasing right out of it. We have the boom, the C and the A and then the other chord just comes right out of the top of it. Instead of starting over, to start over would sound like this. I'm just gonna back up a measure. That's starting over. To actually put an attack on this, uh, to put an attack on this chord right here would make it sound like it's starting over and we don't wanna do that. So, so don't do it. So do a long short instead, decrescendo to it and make this into a release and then start the new line from here. So as just the treble line goes, it would be two, three, and then measure six. Then it would be like the beginning, which is, we're gonna break right there, and then and think to there, and then to there. We end up thinking it as one big thing, but as far as, kind of just organizing it away from the trap of the piece, which is just these neighbor tones, da da da, this little kind of a, this mordant idea, we would go away and come back constantly, then we're just gonna um, separate it into two, three, one, two, three, one. So, playing just the upper line, two, three, one, two, three, one, which means that this again is a long short from here to here in the upper line is a long short. Long short, L-O-N-G dash S-H-O-R-T is what I'm saying if you have a hard time understanding me. So that means that this note is a release. This note's quiet. This note's quiet too, right? So this note is also quiet. It is, the, herein lies the challenge of making all this balance where we're still making sound in the midst of all these quiet notes. So then whenever we go to this, then we still, actually we'll get to that in a second. Let's go back to here and look at this bass line. Here, ba da ta is a big crescendo, right? Because the line's going down, F, F, E, D. The line's going down, therefore we get louder on that. So let's just take that to that and then just play to right there. So here we have two, three, one, two. Well, this is an interesting 
point because this is, this is what I was talking about earlier, where you have conflicting ideas here. So in the upper voice, check this out. In the upper voice, we have a long short, right? Long short. That means that we want to decrescendo to that, right? Let me do that over. We want to decrescendo to that note. Well, here we have this line going down and we want to crescendo this, right? So here we have a crescendo. And so we have on this arrival differing objectives. The bass line wants to get louder as it comes down and the top line wants to do a long short. So how do we balance that? And that comes into balance in the right hand because now that means that the thumb is going to continue its line the finger, the M finger, is going to actually be playing quietly. So the chord, the B and the D at measure six right here, we need the B to be very quiet and the D to be more present. So then here, this is why this kind of playing really builds technique, is because you're forced to do this. You're forced to, um, to balance things in the hand. You have very real musical demands going on. So as a practice technique on this, just using the open B and D strings is perfect for it, then I would just practice playing them both absolutely evenly and then playing very strong of each of them while the other one's very soft. We'll start with a soft B and a loud D. And then the opposite, very loud B, very soft D. the better and the more exaggerated the difference between the two when you're practicing that the better because here we're going to need that we're going to need that balance so that the thumb continues loud across right here so that this is becomes louder and this then becomes quieter at the same time from there then we can go forward and crescendo that line from there in the top. So let's just play this from there then. Now remember, this is still, this has been a long short to there, so that's quiet. We'll start with the C and the A. We'll start right here, just for kicks. And so here we have it again. The exact same issue. Would you look at that? The top line is crescendoing because we're going down C, B, A, right? This line right here. It's going down. Whereas in the left hand, we have, oh, I'm sorry, in the bass line, we have another long short right there, right? So then this needs to decrescendo to that. So we have the exact same issue, but opposite on this chord right here. So right here, beginning of measure six, this right here, this chord, we have a loud bass and a soft upper. And then on the next one, we have the exact opposite. Where the thumb is quiet and the index finger in this case will be loud. So this takes some little bit of practice. And so I would just practice just these, take the middle notes out, beats two and three of measure six, take those out and just practice loud thumb, soft finger. And then switch them. So that the first chord, this one, the top is soft, the bottom is loud. Then on this one, the, uh, the top is loud and the bottom is soft, switching back and forth between those two. Really good technique work there. Then we'll put the notes back in for the measure. Like that, and then we have our lines that are scooping kind of taking over for each other in that way. Now, from this point, let's go on here. 
from this point right here. So now we've crescendoed over to that. Da, da, da. So that went to there. Now these are going to go to here, and this is a crescendo because we're going bum, 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 decrescendo off to that because it's going up from the A to the B. Now meanwhile, in the bass, it's just a decrescendo because we're going up. C, D, D sharp, E. And so then it's exactly the same thing as we were talking about before. The top is crescendoing, the bottom is decrescendoing. You thought this was an easy piece. Ha! Not even close. So the way to do this is to practice each line separately. So practice just the top. This is just the last three notes. B, A, G sharp, da, da. And then here are the last three notes of the bass. Exaggerate it when you practice it. Da, 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 da. Back off for those three. Then you would put them together and think about their relative um, their relative dynamics to each other. So the first, just to clarify this beyond all, all question, we are looking at these three notes right there. Then we have they're both kind of at a um, at a medium, basically a medium thing. We've just we're, this note on the top is quieter than the one before it, but it doesn't mean it's quiet necessarily, it just means it's quieter than the one before it. And then we're going to crescendo. The bottom one, also quieter than the one before it, but not necessarily meaning totally quiet. Actually, let me take that back. Because of this long short right here, then it kind of, we can start over. So that we can put a little bit more onto this note because we're then, we need to put more on this one because we're going forward because we're going forward and, and we're decrescendoing so we actually need to jump in with this note right here with a little bit of um, with a little bit of juice so that we can have somewhere to decrescendo from so let's do that so the balance is As, the, as we go through here, the bottom is getting softer and the top is getting louder. So there's the, these lines are, con, are convening here and so the balance is shifting from one to the next, from one top heavy to bottom heavy, or actually bottom heavy to top heavy as it is. Tricky to talk about but, it's, um, but I hope you're, you're uh, understanding what it is that I'm saying here. So on a clean score what we're looking at are these convening lines. This is going one way, this is going another way. Okay, so just as a, as a recap here for this section, we're completely ignoring that. We're completely ignoring this. The top is going down in pitch, the bottom is going up in pitch. And so then what we're going to do with that is that the top is getting louder and the bottom is getting quieter. And so our balance is shifting from one to the next. And so it's a constant finagle and it's managing all these different, all these different issues. This is a long short. That means this note is quiet. I'll just put it in parentheses. We want more on this note. And then so that we can have somewhere to go to get quiet and then decrescendoing up from there. Meanwhile, this we want to get quiet to here to this note right here because we need somewhere to crescendo on this note right here because we need somewhere to crescendo from. So as soon as we know that we want to crescendo, we need to pull back so that we have somewhere to go. We're constantly managing these uh, these, these desires. 
Now when we come across the bar into this, into this right here, then we're dealing with how do we go forward from here? And so again, get rid of the rest idea. You can put it in when you're actually playing the piece, but when you're practicing, forget about the rest and think about the connection of this and this and say, how are these connecting? Two, because it is, a, again, it's a long short, right? Two, three, one. One, two, back off. And then you can move forward. Dun, da, da, da. Then you can move forward from there. But the initial release is to back off because of the long shore coming through there. When you're, at, when you're coming to the next one, it's the exact same thing. When you're coming into this next, then it's a long short leading into there as well. And what we've got going on is then we've got, we've got more of the same here. But here we're just gonna, we're taking over for each other, just like we were up here in the beginning part. This is very similar in that here we have a line going down, right? So that's going to crescendo. And then in the top, we've got a long short. So that's just going to release into a quiet note. So this is going to crescendo in the bass. This is going to long short, which means it's going to decrescendo from there to there. So this note is played quietly. I'll put it in parentheses. From there, then we can pick up and move forward. So let's do that. Starting it with the E and G sharp from the measure before. Two, three, off. Oh, again. Two, three, off. Really make that come right out of it. One, two, three, off. Three, two, three. So again, when we play this C and A right here, when we get to this C and this A right here, then we've got a balance thing. The bottom's very loud, the top's very quiet. So, two, three, two, three. We're solidly on the C, but the A is kind of quiet on the top. Again, one more time so you can hear it. Two, two, three. Again. is so that the bottom note's heavier. From there, we can look at this and say, okay, decrescendo up, crescendo down. That means we're crescendoing to this note. So then from the, from the C, constant finagle in here, because then what happens is, We've got another long short in the bass, right? That's our long short, so that note's quiet. So we're constantly saying over and over the same thing, which is looking at what's taken over for what. So in this case, the top is loud here. I'm sorry, the top is soft here, and it's loud here. Down here, this is loud while this is soft. So we're just balancing them back and forth. And you can just go play the downbeats of the measures, getting the balance like you want it, such as, and then the second bar, which is colored on our page right here. And then we switch that and we have a soft E and a loud B. And then finally, again, a soft B, it switches again. A loud A. And a soft, and a soft B. So it's switching back and forth. This is soft, then loud, then soft in the top. I'm sorry, soft. And then the B is loud, and then we release back to the C. And this goes over and over and over again, right? Here we have another long short from here to here, right? 
So now this one's quiet. And then we crescendo down. So as we're looking about that, we'll look at this, the last couple of bars here, the last few bars in a minute. But this is a constant negotiation of differing, differing ideas. So whenever we, um, whenever we look at, let's go right here. Whenever we see this right here, this is a really nice, nice spot. Whenever we see that we're approaching a downbeat right here, when we're approaching this downbeat from a, a jump, so we're down here, we're going A, we're going to jump up a major third to the C sharp, put a little bit of extra weight here, put, put some nice, a nice accent right there, and then decrescendo up to it. Da -da. And it just releases really well. So it ends up being like this. I'll play, let's play that measure. Da -da. Da -da. So bring out the A, more on that note, less on the C sharp, which actually helps us because we have this long short down here as well. And um, because we have this long short, it'll help us to release and not play that C sharp as loud anyway. It's just one less place we have to finagle our balance. So as we're going through here negotiating these, this gets quieter, this gets louder, and then it gets softer again for that. Once we get down here, then we have this crescendoing bass line, just like I said, and then here is another long short. So then this one, put it in parentheses, is, is quiet. Now, as we, as we look at this, this last little bit right here, this last section, then we can really look at that idea of approaching notes by leaps. So here we have a leap from this note to this note, right? So definitely we want to crescendo that. So I've maybe put a little bit of extra on that because that was a long short leading to there, so that's quiet. More on this note, less on here. And then we're doing it again, aren't we? We're gonna get louder to, the, to right here in the downbeat. Quiet on this, loud for this, and then back off at the end. So it ends up being something like this right here. Just the top line from the C sharp, four bars back is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So really bring out this note right here. Really, really bring that out as a, as a strong note. Big plus sign, meaning more of that note. So I'm just going to do that one more time. One, two, three, long, short, loud, soft, loud, soft loud, soft. So we're going and here, and here, and here. I'll do it again. One, two, three, off. And then here, and then here. And that just really gives us a whoosh. We're just moving right through these notes and it really draws us forward. Much better than any kind of clunky downbeat thing. One, two, I'm sorry. One, two, three, off. And then that up, and here. Anyway, the G sharp to the A at the very end is really interesting because it's a half step, and half steps are interesting in our ears. They really tell us a lot of information that the harmony is changing, and we really can make sense of leading tone leading to the, to the tonic, especially across a downbeat at a strong point in the phrase, like it is at the very end, it's the resolution. So really, we know where we're going. We know home. We don't need to accent the one chord. We all know the one chord. What's interesting is to accent G sharp and then back off for the one chord. Da, da. The G sharp is the interesting part. The one is a foregone conclusion. We know we're, go we're going home at the end of this phrase. We know our ear is being led here with this entire, this entire phrase that we're playing. We know we're going to the one chord. There's no question of that. And so the question is then, what's interesting and can we make that the point instead of the, the obvious conclusion that we're coming to. So as we look at this bass line, so that was the, um, 
that's that. So then we have this bass line here, yes? And so I would, let's just play that. We'll play it all the way back here from the B flat right here. That's a long short. And so, one, two, three. Pretty straight up, yes? Do a long short, two, three, off, and then here in two, three. Now here, this is an interesting thing because we're going up here, right? But we're actually going down So in the other one. So we're crescendoing the top, decrescendoing the bottom on that one. So this right here, this chord, is a place to isolate them and again and work work the balance issue so that the top is loud and the bottom is soft yeah and then when we land on this we're going to release we decrescendo to that one chord now when it actually repeats then when we get to the repeat we want to again ignore that rest And release into the long short as much as possible because we want it, we don't want this to sound like the end. I'll just play the last measure. So we want the B section, the, the the repeat of the B section to continue. We want we don't want to start over the B section. Let me start it over for you. Not you'll you'll hear what I'm talking about. Last last couple measures. It starts over whenever we play that loud it starts over instead of something to something to think about the last time it doesn't matter because we're not going on. So whenever you come back then after you've got all this and then if you want to put these rests in you can. The trap with the rest right there is if you actually accent the note after it and make it sound like it's starting over. So remember all of these decrescendo, decrescendo, decrescendo so that the line keeps continuing forward so that um, we're always moving, moving things forward. So you thought that was an easy little piece when you saw it there, but it's not, is it? It's actually a handful to, actually, to negotiate all those differing, those conflicting directional movements in the dynamic. So really fun exercise in the long short and balance. So hope you got a lot out of that. If you liked this, please send it along to your buddies. Subscribe to this. Leave a comment. Do all that kind of good stuff. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching, making it through this whole thing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.